Hello and welcome to the Mentor Education Auditing and Compliance Short Courses Student Information Session. With me today, I have Chief Academic Officer Iona McKinney to talk about um, the ins and outs of these specific courses. Iona, welcome. Hi, James. It's great to be here. Now, the space of auditing and compliance we've seen grow exponentially, really, uh, you know, certainly in the last five years and perhaps even more so in the last two or three years. In, I think in many respects, it's a response to the sort of regulatory environment that we're now operating in, the high degrees of governance and transparency that's required in organisations from a whole range of industries. So couldn't really be a better time to be talking about these particular short courses. And in saying that, let's jump on over to a course outline and background and have a look at what's involved. Over to you. So um, the auditing, lead auditor skill set and the compliance skill set, um, which, are, which students um, are encouraged to actually take up together. So um, as students are studying these two skill sets or these two short courses, they're developing a really broad appreciation and some really great skills in auditing and compliance. So the course, the, the, both, the, both the courses are designed to provide flexible um, auditing and compliance focused um, skills and knowledge and, and development. And it's fair to say that, or as you mentioned in, in our introduction today, that um, there are so many industries where auditing and compliance are just integral to what actually um, happens on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, we, we could be um, working in the food industry where we need to look at um, health regulation and we need to look at food production and, and the requirements of that. We could be working in the financial services sector um, or we could be working in, um, in a derivatives or margin lending um, area. We could be looking at finance and mortgage broking um, and needing to uh, monitor um, compliance for uh, requirements for registration and ongoing registration. We could be in the banking sector. We could also be in the accounting sector. So they're, they're, they're just some, some very, um, very initial, you know, the, the areas of industry that really jumped to the forefront of my mind. But there's other areas. So the aviation industry, um, police and security industry, there's compliance requirements in every one of those industries. Education industry as well, where we have requirements for uh, CPD and CPE. Accounting, where we also have to ensure compliance um, with accreditations. I could just go on and on and on. So the idea of these short courses is to actually um, support uh, the learning and development of people that work in those auditing and compliance roles um, within organisations, but across a really broad sector of industries. Excellent. Now, whilst we've got it up there in front of us, um, probably worth just taking a moment to exploring um, how this particular series of short courses can be structured. So mm -hmm. there is, of course, an option to bundle them together. So um, by completing the BSB, um, Double S double zero one two eight lead auditor skill set with the BSB double S double zero one double two compliance skill set. Okay, because really there is a nice synergy between the obviously the lead auditing skill set and the compliance skill set, which I think delivers a little bit more of a um, holistic range of competencies that can really be applied to a lot of the roles and sectors that you've talked about. Uh, but then there is, of course, the option to do them individually. And in saying that, let's have a look at um, each of the different skill sets and the units that are involved. And of course, the timeframes that potential students should think about allocating towards the completion of them. Over to you. So um, for the lead auditor skill set, students are required to uh, complete four units of study. Um, we recommend that students um, allocate at least 12 weeks to complete those um, the, those four units. So in, in the lead auditor skill set, students will um, undertake a number of things that are really that really focus on auditing and the process of auditing. So that they'll look at initiating quality audits, um, leading audits, participating in audits, and preparing uh, for audit and what that preparation what what um, what's required to undertake that preparation, and then of course producing the audit report. Um, I'll utilise um, um, a, 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 an example here uh, from um, the 
audit process or the preparation for audit process to become um, ISO accredited with um, 9001 2015. So um, what we do is we actually look at what, what's existing, so we prepare for the audit. Um, then we undertake gap, gap analysis, which is about the initiate, which is about the preparation um, process. Then we go through the actual um, internal audit process and, and the mapping process. And then of course, we um, create the audit report as a result of that. Um, so um, that's just one example of a, um, a framework that we might be working against that I, I think everyone that's um, listening or watching um, would be familiar with. So that's what we look at in the lead auditor um, short course. The compliance uh, short course is um, li literally um, goes together so well with the auditing skill set. So we look at compliance frameworks and how we work within those frameworks. So how to take standards and regulations and guidelines and um, and and even um, parts of law. So corp the Corporations Act and so on and so forth. Um, and and how we work within those frameworks. Then we look at interpreting those frameworks in our own context and evaluating and reviewing the compliance within those frameworks or the, and the performance of the organisation against those frameworks. And then, of course, we come back to our auditor skill set. So we, we look at um, how that compliance behaviour and that involvement in compliance actually uh, leads into the audit process as well. So a as we mentioned before, although there are two separate short courses, often um, we encourage um, people that are interested in audit and compliance or have those type of roles in any organisation to actually uptake both of these short courses together. Excellent. Now, probably one other thing um, worth exploring whilst we're talking about the individual skill sets is how that they can actually be put towards a, um, a subsequent qualification. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what opportunities um, are available there. Okay, so the lead auditor skill set um, directly um, credits to the Diploma of Quality Audit. So students are able to actually take their completion of these four audits, um, or oh, these four audits, I apologise, these four units, and, and have them credited um, by an institution that delivers the Diploma of Auditing um, um, to, to their course, yes. Excellent. Now, we've talked already um, about the broad application um, of these particular skill sets to a whole range of industries and different occupations. And we've got obviously quite a number of them listed up there. Um, but one that I wanted to draw attention to was the compliance analyst role. And this was just sort of one of many um, compliance type roles that are listed on SEEK at the moment. Um, and to demonstrate the sort of demand that we're seeing out there for individuals with these sort of skill sets and competencies, um, we can look at something like the average salary and, of course, the job satisfaction. So $110,000 is very generous salary. And I think it demonstrates the sort of um, requirements that organisations have at the moment, uh, particularly in responding to the increasing regulatory requirements across all sorts of industries. Now, in response, I did a bit of research earlier on, owner, and I thought, I thought I'd just... Um, 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 make, make, make this available to those who have tuned in today. And there was a report released last year from the Australian Productivity um, Commission, um, which was covering the costs of compliance and regulations on business. And what they found was that um, approximately a quarter of small and medium sized businesses will spend 11 hours or more on compliance um, and over 20% of businesses um, that's each week, of course. And then over 20% of businesses will spend between ten dollars and $50,000 per year on compliance. And then as a further indicator, over a one-year period, we saw a 122% increase in the number of jobs related to compliance and regulation um, listed on the job advertising website. So again, that sort of data combined with what we've got with respect to just one role up there, I think really demonstrates the sort of demand and requirement um, that there is, and then of course the benefits for those who are considering taking on these skill sets. Now, the learning materials themselves, we've had a look at the units, how's it all brought to life? Sorry, everybody. Um, the <laughs> learning materials are made up of uh, learner guides, uh, self-directed learning activities. Uh, there's video in some of the, the, um, the, the, um, 
the, the, the units, um, also students experience um, multiple choice questions and a number of other things as well. But there's a lot of opportunity within each unit to actually practice um, what, um, what, what the outcomes that, that, that um, we're expecting from the course. So we'd be expecting as we, as, as we exited these courses to really have a grasp on compliance and what those frameworks are. We um, and and a grasp on what 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 we do as an auditor, and to be able to prepare prepare for an audit, to be able to initiate the audit, but also to be able to undertake an audit and um, and issue the audit report. So um, there are um, pre-recorded webinars um, that are also available um, with the with, within the the units of study, um, and of course the assessment support. Um, and um, and study support tutorial recorded webinars that are also available within each unit as well. So there's a very broad range of learning materials that students have access to, um, and there is also uh, PowerPoint presentations for students to download, as well as um, full workbooks and textbooks available within um, that are appropriate to each unit of study. Excellent. Now, really an extension of the learning materials themselves is the assessment functions that students completing the course will be exposed to. Now, we've got a list of some of the uh, assessment tasks up here um, that students may be exposed to in each and every unit, but certainly not all of them by any stretch. Talk to us about what that might look like. So commonly students will come across two or three of these different types of assessment tasks within units. So um, the um, compliance and audit short courses um, do contain a lot of case studies and scenarios, um, short answer questions, long answer questions, and some project and presentation tasks as well. Um, commonly students would complete, for example, a combination of some short answer questions and some project tasks. Um, or some case study and scenarios and project tasks or long answer questions and so on and so forth. So commonly students um, do come across two or three of these. I will say this, that um, throughout the unit, students will have an opportunity to practice the types of tasks that will be required in the um, assessment for each unit. So of course, the assessment task will be an assessment task, but students will have practiced that before they actually get to their assessment. So they're able to confidently attempt their assessments. Excellent. Now in saying that as well, how closely aligned to, I think what happens in industry um, is learning materials and the assessment functions. And I think, you know, how confident could we be stepping into a role, you know, focusing on, um, you know, capitalizing any of these competencies, could we be um, having, of course, had access to the learning material and then subsequently completed the assessments. So common to all compliance and, um, and audit functions within organisations are certain skills and certain core knowledge, and that's where we focus on. So it's a broad-based course with a generic approach. Um, it, the, the courses um, are deliberately um, or, or should I say, yes, they are deliberately um, created in that way. So um, if you were, for example, working in um, financial services and you um, had a knowledge of the um, regulatory instruments for financial services, for example, um, then you would comfortably be able to utilise your audit and compliance skills in financial services okay. um, that you'd developed in this course. The same would apply um, in other um, in in other industries as well. Um, excuse me, but all industries, as we know, has have their own specific instruments and their own specific standards and guidelines and so on and so forth. So um, it's impossible in any course to cover all of those. So what we've done is we've focused focused on the true skill um, that's required or the true skills that are required to undertake those roles. And we've approached it from a broad-based approach. We've taken a broad-based approach to these courses. Excellent. Now, what I thought I'd do is just, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, talk briefly about the online learning experience and of course, how you get access to the learning materials and the assessments and things like that. So um, key requirements really are access to a desktop or laptop computer um, and a uh, reasonable internet connection. So, 
with your desktop um, computer and internet connection or laptop computer and internet connection, you'll be able to log into the learning management system, the LMS that we call it. And that's done by um, way of your browser. So that might be your Chrome, your Firefox, your Mac equivalent, whatever it is that you choose to use. And you can log in 24 hours a day, which is really good because it promotes that idea of flexibility. And of course, being able to manage study and make it work and fit in with, with, with what um, you've got going on in life. And that could be family, um, that could be work, it could be a combination of both, it could be anything and everything. So um, having that flexibility, of course, to um, access the learning management system and, and, and log in when suits you is, of course, really beneficial. Now, on that theme of flexibility as well, I'd also make mention that because you can access it through your browser, should you decide to, um, the, the, you can also access the learning material on a smart device. So that might be your smartphone or a tablet or whatever it may be. So it could be that you do your reading um, in transit or in bed or whatever it may be. But certainly when it comes to completing the assessments, um, we do recommend a laptop or desktop computer. Um, other than that, um, of course, in some units as well, there is the option to get exposure to um, live online classroom based um, uh, tutorials where you can interact directly with your educator in real time and, of course, other students in your cohort. But if you've got any questions about those kind of things, certainly the best thing to do is speak with your dedicated um, education advisor. Now, speaking of education advisors, let's have a look at the um, support functions that are available. So right from the very beginning, um, particularly if you have an interest in this course, um, the most likely uh, team members that you will be in contact with are the education advice team. Now, they'll speak to you about what it is that you're currently doing, uh, where it is that you'd obviously like to go in the future, and of course, how this course or series of courses, I should say, um, would, would fit in um, and uh, best be delivered so that you can get the outcomes that you want. So in addition to the education advice team, you also have support functions made available through the student support officers team. And then of course, once you become a student, they're there to support you with just about anything and everything. And that could be resetting passwords on your learning management system. It could be applying for extensions, even managing your submission processes for your assessments, and then booking appointments with the education team, who arguably um, are probably one of the most important support functions that you're going to have access to, of course, once you're enrolled. Now, education team is available nine to five, Monday to Friday on the phone, uh, also directly via email. And there are, of course, opportunities for additional one-on-one -on -one support functions as well. I, and I'm gonna hand on over to you um, because you obviously um, in, involved heavily in the education team uh, as the Chief Academic Officer. Talk to us about what those sort of support functions look like. So there's a range of support functions available to students. Students are able to um, contact us, as you've mentioned, via email to our student support team via service at mentor.edu.au. Uh, students are also able to call in within normal business hours between 9 and 5 and ask to speak to an educator. And they'll be linked with um, one of the trainers or educators for the course that they're studying. There's additional supports always available here at Mentor Education. So for students, um, just we, we really do understand that life happens. We also understand that at times returning to study, if we haven't studied for a while, can feel pretty daunting. Um, and we look at this learning management system and go, my goodness me, what does this all mean? Um, so if a student is feeling like that, we encourage you to call in and make an appointment um, via the student support team um, for a one-on-one -on -one session with an educator from the course. Um, that can happen at any time. So um, it, it may be a particular question regarding an assessment. It may be um, that a, a student has got very, very excited as I, as I had a student yesterday about a topic that we were talking about in a tutorial and they wanted extra information. Um, so that one-on-one that -on -one appointment with one of the educators or the trainers for the course can be made at any time. And those appointments usually occur between nine and five. Um, and in some courses, they're also available on Saturday afternoons as well, but not all courses. So check with the student support team if you do call in. Um, aside from that, there is this thing that where life happens. And we know life happens because it also happens to us. So there's a range of other supports that's available to students here at Mentor Education. 
sometimes everything gets the best of us or a life event happens and we, 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 we don't get to complete um, our course before the end date. So we, we encourage students to let us know that they, they're requiring an extension. Um, there's also the opportunity for resubmissions for assessments and remarking. Um, and as I mentioned before, there's those really great one-on-one -on -one student support sessions that can be booked within business hours. So there's a whole range of supports that we have. Really, we just encourage our students to communicate with us. The more you tell us, the more you, sh you share with us. If you're having challenges, the more that we can work with you to have the appropriate supports in place so you can confidently continue your studies. Excellent. Now, I've also put together a series of questions that we often get asked um, when it comes to enrolling in courses and, of course, some of the deliverables. And the first one is, can I get government funding? And the short answer to that is no. Um, all of our courses are self-funded by students. But that said, um, we do have payment plans and options available. So if you're interested in exploring some of those, um, a little bit like obtaining additional information about the course, the best thing you can do is speak to one of our dedicated education advisors based here in Melbourne. Now, when can I start? You can start at just about any time. So usually we say, look, if you can get enrolment into us, you'll be up and running on the learning management system with access to anything and everything you need within a 24 hour period. Yes, it's all included. So anything and everything from the learning materials, um, textbooks um, on, online, of course, um, and, and, and assessments is all included with the course for you. And probably one other point to make there as well is when it does come to assessments, in the event that you do need to um, resubmit an assessment for one reason or another, um, that's made available to you for no charge. So um, anything and everything that you need to complete the course, in short, is, all, is included in the um, enrolment fee. We do, of course, have um, difference with study options that apply to some courses more than others, um, which is the self-directed and, of course, the access to the online virtual classrooms and tutorials. When available, um, we always recommend students take advantage of the online classroom-based virtual tutorials for that sense of connectivity and, of course, interact, uh, interaction um, that you can establish, not just with the educator, but, of course, with the cohort as well. The course, uh, so the skill sets are nationally recognised in all states and territories around Australia. Um, now, there are no prerequisites, um, but if you do have any questions about that, um, um, certainly speak to your education advisor um, team member there and they can answer any questions. Because in saying that, we do recommend, certainly with skill sets such as this, that you do have a reasonable command of English language and numeracy skills there as well. And how long do people usually take to finish? Well, that 10, uh, 10 weeks and 12 weeks time frame is what you want to have in your mind when it comes to those two different skill sets. Now, Anna, we've had quite a lot of experience uh, in delivering uh, online education for the past 17, almost 18 years now. Um, and in that time, um, we've worked um, in the financial services sector, the accounting sector, the business, the project management, um, IT, and of course, what we're talking about today <laughs> links in with all of those different sectors um, and, and certainly more. We've also achieved some pretty great student outcomes over the years, and we've got some information about the ones that um, we got last year independent, uh, reported by the National Centre for Vocational Education and Research. Now, I will uh, make the point to those tuning in, these aren't our self-reported numbers. These actually come from an independent research body. And I'm going to hand on maybe to talk to us about what they actually mean. So every year, the um, <laughs> National Centre for Vocational Education and Research um, undertakes a, um, an Australia-wide survey um, of all students in all courses at all levels um, regarding their courses and how they feel about them and, and what their experiences are. So we are eagerly awaiting the um, results from our 2021 uh, survey uh, at the end of October. But today we're, we're, we're just sharing our VET student outcomes for 2020. So very proudly, these are the things that mentor education uh, students, or, or a few of the things that mentor education students say about mentor education and about us. 92% um, of our graduates here at Mentor are employed or, or enrol in further study after training. 91.6% of our students are satisfied with the quality of their training. 86.5% of students would recommend Mentor as a training provider. And very excitingly and very proudly for us, 90.2% of our students are satisfied with their assessment. So um, we, 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 we just thought we would share this um, in today's student information session as it really demonstrates our commitment to our students and our prospective students and 
um, and we're very going to be very excited to see what our outcomes are for 2021. Excellent. Now, finally, um, if you'd like more information on what we've talked about today, uh, head on over to the website and there you'll be able to download a course guide which has got anything and everything which we talked about today plus more, including detailed information about the skill sets and, and what's included in each of those units as well. Um, the other way you can get in contact with us and get obviously get more information or enrol directly is to email us at courseconsultant at mentor.edu.au and that way you can be put in contact directly with an education advisor who can of course answer any questions you may have. Uh, if you prefer to pick up the phone, 1300 306 146, call us direct. Um, again, nine to five, Monday to Friday, Melbourne and Sydney time. Um, our team, uh, certainly our education device team is based here in Melbourne and always happy to answer any questions you've got via the phone as well. And if none of those options work, again, head on over to the website. We've got a live instant messaging chat function where you can chat uh, in live real time with the team. And again, answer any questions that you might have about this particular course. Iona, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, James. It's been great um, being here talking about auditing and compliance. Excellent. Thank you so much to everybody who's tuned in. Uh, we certainly look forward to seeing you as students very soon. And as always, take an opportunity to excite your potential and we'll see you next time.